Hi, welcome to my sewing room. We are gonna have so much fun today. Do you see all my little friends down here? Teddy bears. Probably most of you know how much I love to dress dolls. Well, the other part of that secret is I love to dress teddy bears too. My first little teddy bear here has a French sewn dress on. Robin's egg blue, you can see the machine embroidery on the collar. And come down to the little skirt, you can see the beautiful machine puffing that's stitched down with machine needle entredeau. That's a very easy dress to make and my little girl bear really likes it. Now we cannot leave out the little boy teddy bears. Here is my little boy teddy bear who has a beautiful crazy patch vest with all kinds of wonderful decorative stitching. And of course, little boy bears have to have a pair of pants. So there's the pair of pants that matches his vest. Then on over to his little friend that really matches him, I think this might be his girlfriend, is a little girl bear in a little satin dress and lots of beautiful trim, lacy trim. We have several techniques today to share with you concerning the joy of teddy bear dressing. Since two of my bears had on really precious crazy patch vest, I thought it might be fun to see how you do crazy patch for a bear. First of all, I'm going to draw my pattern. This time, I'm simply going to work on a piece of paper. I draw the pattern on and I get a five-sided figure to go in the middle. Step number two is to take another piece of fabric lay it down right sides to right sides, straight stitch along here, and then you can trim away that if you want to, but then you're gonna open it up. Next, I will take a piece of pink fabric. I will put it right sides to right sides, stitch where the red fabric goes, and then open it up. Now, I have trimmed this pink fabric a little bit just to make it a little bit more interesting figure, and I'm gonna go over here and trim this gold fabric a little bit, and now then I have several more interesting sides. In other words, the next strip I'm going to use is gonna come from here to here. All right, over here I have moved around all the way around and I now have a, a blue piece and a green piece. Once again, you just move around one piece at a time and stitch from here to here and then fold it up and then come in and trim it away to make it smaller. Now that was done on paper. After I finish my crazy patch, I will stitch again from this side right here, from the wrong side, I will stitch just a scant 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around the shape of the vest. In other words, I'm stitching in my vest and then I will go back and cut away all of the excess crazy patch from all the way around the vest. Now that's if I make it on paper. On this example, I have done the crazy patch on a piece of fabric rather than a piece of paper. And you're gonna say maybe, Martha, why would you do it on paper? You can't put paper in a vest, but guess what? Vests are gonna have a lining, so you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to put a lining back there anyway. But you can make it on fabric, you do the same thing, and then when you trim it away, you'll have a fabric background when you cut out your vest. Now then, there's one more background you can use for Crazy Patch, this is a substance that sort of feels like fabric, maybe like a canvas of some kind, and when you press it later on, get it kind of hot and scorch it. As you can see, it looks sort of scorched here, but guess what? It just goes away. It just kind of crumbles away uh, when you put heat on it. Just kind of brushes away. So that's a good stabilizer also. And then you can take your decorative threads. In this case, I have used gold metallic and have so much fun just decorating right in between all those squares. Now this is what your vest looks like after you have stitched your crazy patch and cut it out. It is right now just ready for its decorative stitching. I'm gonna show you exactly how you line and put together this little adorable teddy bear vest. But first of all, let me let you take a nice close look at this little bear's vest. He has all kinds of fabrics, printed fabrics, uh, solid color fabrics. His little suit closes with buttons and buttonholes, and his little pants are really easy to make. They just have elastic. Okay, let's put this vest together. First step, 
I take my lining and I take my front of my crazy patch and I will sew the side seams. This is my lining and let's just pretend this is crazy patch even though I just have a red fabric. Okay, right sides to right sides, I pin the lining and the vest together after sewing up the underarm seams. Step number two, I sew. Now leave, leave a place open at the bottom. I've got to have a place to turn this vest. I sew all the way around, very, about a one quarter inch seam allowance, all the way around the vest, up to here and stop. Move over, start again. Sew all the way around the armhole, up to the shoulder and stop. Move over, start again. Sew all the way around here, stop, move over, start again. Sew all the way around here, stop, move over, start again. Sew all the way around, all the way down, and all the way back over here. I've left about an inch and a half opening. Now this will be the place where I will turn my vest right side out. Okay, I'll come in here and turn my vest right side out. And I have another piece here through the magic of television that will show you it's already done. So after I stitch it, I've turned it right side out. Now I'm going to have to do something to attach these little tiny shoulder seams. That's not a whole lot of fun, but it's not too difficult either. And then, of course, after I get the shoulder seams attached, I'm going to have to come in here and hand whip the bottom. Okay? When I'm ready to attach the shoulder seams, the bigger one, I will take something, a little shish kebab stick, or in this case, I'll just take my scissors and push it down where I have a little seam allowance pushed down in there. And then I will take this particular part of the shoulder seam and push it up into the area where it's turned down. Here is one already done for you and pinned. I will whip it by hand and go in here and whip this one by hand. And that is how easy it is to put together that adorable little vest. Now the next little dress I'd like to show you and talk about is the traditional little French sewn dress. This little dress has a collar with a little machine embroidery on it and also has some puffing on the skirt. You can see the collar with the scallop or the scallop, whichever one you want to call it, and the gathered lace. And also here is the here are the two rows of insertion and the puffing. Now then let me make let's just make that little collar for you. First thing we do is to come in and trace the collar off. Then I will gather my laces around here. I'll gather the laces and pin them. If I would like to, I will do a wing needle entredot or a pin stitch to attach the gathered lace at the collar at the same time to attach the lace to the collar. And then after I do my stitching, I will cut away the fabric. See, this is before I cut away the fabric. And then I will cut away the fabric from behind and my collar is finished. On the skirt of that little dress is a really sweet a uh, fancy band which has insertion which has been attached using both the wing needle uh, entredot or the wing or the wing needle pin stitch. Now maybe you're saying, well I couldn't do that wing needle work through puffing. Yes you can. Let me just show you how it's done. I'm going to do a wing needle pin stitch. I'm going to hold my, uh, my lace down. I do not cut the puffing away. I'm going to hold the lace down and I'm going to stitch. The shish kebab stick is so wonderful to hold with because if I should happen to stitch over it with this wing needle or with any needle, it will not hurt the fabric at all. Now you see that pin stitch kind of jumps back and forth and it makes a really beautiful hole and some people think, well, you can't do those pretty wing needle entredos or the pin stitches through puffing, but I have found through experience that really, yes, you can do those stitches through puffing and it really is pretty. So this is how you attach the lace at the top and the bottom. Now let me just pull this out so you can see how pretty that is right through that puffing. And a lot of people think you really can't stitch through the puffing, but you can. All right, I'm going to show you one more little trick, and this is just an easy, quick trick. This little doll has a really sweet uh, elastic around her dress. That's the only way the little dress is held on right around the sleeves. She has elastic, so let me show you how the elastic is done. This is what it looks like after it's finished. Let me turn it over. You have the little lace on the bottom. First of all, 
I just set my machine on zigzag and I go back and move it, leave it over about an eighth of an inch and I simply zigzag on the outside of the fabric and over to catch the heading of the lace. When it is attached, it will look like this on the back, like this on the front, and let me show you the trick for putting in that elastic. I draw my elastic line on and I get a long piece of elastic. Simply lay the elastic down with no stretch at all. Just lay it down on the sleeve and zigzag over it, going over the elastic, over the elastic, over the elastic, over the elastic. And then when it is all stitched down, I'll come in here and pull it up the size of my little bear's arm. I will just simply use it to gather it up however long my little bear's arm will be. By the way, I did uh, zigzag it down on this end so it won't pull through. And then I have a beautiful elastic on that little sleeve. And next, I have a craft for you. Using an old mirror from the antique store, or maybe you just have one at home, you can make a beautiful decorative accessory. This is an old mirror, and that a pretty handled brass? And I've just put lots of goodies on it, an old handkerchief, some flowers. This is just kind of one of those glue crazy patch projects. All right, here's my old mirror, and actually it isn't very good on this side because it's kind of torn up, so I'm just gonna leave it facing down. I'm gonna take some lace, gather it up, pin it or stitch it and hot glue gun it. Then I'm going to take an old handkerchief or maybe even a new handkerchief if you don't have one and that's gonna be my next step. Glue gun it and perhaps trim it if it's too long down here. And then I have some flowers which I will trim off but the little flowers can go right in here and a little bow goes on top of the flowers and then if you have some little pieces of lace, just simply glue the lace over and under perhaps glue it over on this side and make a little finish to those flowers. And one of the cute things that you can get at a craft store, if I can pick it up here, are the little charms, the little gold charms, and they can be glued on at an appropriate place for a really quick, easy, and inexpensive craft. And next, I have a really beautiful doll dress for you. This doll dress reminds me of a wonderful raspberry sherbet. I think you'll know what I mean when you look at it with me. This is actually a little dress and a pinafore. I'm gonna point over here the little pin tucks on the bodice of the dress, entredeau and gathered lace, gathered lace and entredeau, lace treatment down the front of the pinafore, and the pinafore skirt is so sweet. It has lace treatment down the front and ribbons running the beading. And let me hold this up for you to see the skirt of this dress. Isn't that adorable with its pin tucks and its entredeau trim? Now, I'm going to turn this dress around so you can see how precious the pinafore is in the back. It has a little curved section on the skirt with that beautiful wide gathered lace. Now, let's see how to construct this dress in the pinafore in a very quick style. This, first of all, to make the sleeve, I make a square of fabric. Then I trace out the sleeve and cut it out and add the other embellishments. The bodice is a pin tucked piece that I cut out after I did the pin tucks, trimmed with entredeau and lace around the neckline. It's now time to put those sleeves in the bodice of the dress. So I gather the sleeves, stitch them in, and then when it time, comes time to sew it all up, as you do on doll dresses, I'll turn it this way and sew from the underarm all the way out to the edge of the sleeve. The skirt has three pin tucks and then just some real pretty laces and entredeau on the bottom. The little pinafore with the curve, the entredeau curve that went around the back, here's how you do that. I have made an entredeau and lace string. Now let me show you what that looks like. It's a piece of entredeau with the batiste seam allowance still on it and gathered lace for the bottom of this string. Right sides to right sides, I will pin into a circle on this square piece of fabric for the pinafore, come in and clip where the curve goes around, and then to do entredeau to flat fabric, I will stitch along the ditch, straight stitching of the entredeau, trim away about half of that seam allowance, go back and zigzag over it in order to finish it. The other thing I would like to share with you is how to use a pin stitch 
to stitch down the laces that are going to be uh, attached to the pinafore. Now I've used a stabilizer, a paper pull away stabilizer, and I'm going to use a pin stitch with a wing needle. It makes such a pretty stitch. It just looks so elegant. It looks as if you have uh, a turn of the century hem stitcher when you use pin stitching or machine entredeau. Now let me just pull it out to show you how pretty that is. Can you see those wonderful holes that are on the side? Let me put it down here on the darker. See how pretty that stitches it down? Very turn of the century. Now then, the rest of the pinafore is constructed. The pinafore has entredeau and lace around the neckline. Once again, I have to do entredeau to flat fabric technique around the neckline and around the sleeves. And then I have my pinafore finished, and I'm going to put a little bit of an entredeau beading around the waistline and run the ribbons through, and my beautiful little doll dress is finished. And now I have a beautiful quilt square to share with you. I'm pleased to have as my guest today Margaret Taylor. Margaret is the quilting editor of So Beautiful Magazine, and Margaret constu uh, constructed the quilt that you have been enjoying throughout this series. Welcome to the show, Margaret. Thank you, Martha. As Martha's been telling you through this series um, and showing you the angel quilt, it really has been a joy to work on. And I've tried to make the angels appear to kind of float on the quilt. So today, this, this, for this series, we're going to talk about the bow that we've got in the silk ribbon. Now I'm using a silk, it's not a silk, I'm sorry, it's an organza ribbon. It's a relatively inexpensive ribbon. But instead of just tying the bow into a knot and then tacking it down where it's bulky, I did it a little bit different. So let me show you how I did it. Thank you. <laughs> You've got your piece of embroidery that's finished and your bow needs to go right here. Instead of tying it in a knot, what I did was I threaded a rather large needle. And this is the needle you're going to be working with. It's a 13 tapestry. And you're thinking, boy, I won't ever use that needle. And you're right, but you need this size needle because of the width of the ribbon. You've got to, even this needle is not as wide as the ribbon, but you've got to have the needle to make the hole large enough because the ribbon will separate and get real tacky. So what I did was just took a stitch in my fabric and left two tails out. Then I took one this side and you thread it in, take your ribbon and put your needle down there and just take the needle and work it around in the fabric until you get the hole large enough and then pull it through. Now, as you can see, the ribbon is twisted. So you're going to have to, let me unpin this so I can pull a little bit closer to me. You're going to have to reach in underneath your square and twist the ribbon from underneath until you can get all of those little puckers worked out of it. So see, now we have a nice straight loop. We've done one here, then we do the other side. And you can, see, you can change the, the size of your loops. You can get them all the same size by simply pulling on the ribbon. And this is what it's gonna look like. Now, let's take another piece of ribbon that we have threaded and I'm going to come up right above the bow. And I've already made my hole there, so I'm going to pull it through. Kind of hold on to it on the back side so it doesn't pull all the way through. Then let's make another hole. This is going to be our knot. Now, if you cut your ribbon long enough, you can do this all in one long piece instead of doing it in several pieces. But to show you on television how to do it, I decided that it would be a little bit better to do it in short pieces. And again, we work with our ribbon until we get the bow shape just like we want it. And we get our knot done, pull it down. And sometimes you can straighten out the ribbon by pulling just one side or the other. Then I'm going to come back right up in under this, this knot. And I'm going to bring my ribbon up. And be careful when you're doing this because if you, if you jerk it, then you're going to pull it out. And then I just take and tie a loose knot in my ribbon. And that makes my knot on my bow. And I put, play, put it down, 
and then carry this to the back side, leaving my tails. And then just simply take a needle and thread, Martha, and tack it all down on and go back. to the back and tack all of your ribbons down on the back and that's it. Mark it, that looks easy enough to me. And now I have a beautiful home decorating project for you. How would you like to make a brand new collection of something worthy to go into a museum that doesn't cost very much? Well, you might want to make a collection of mannequins like the ones I have today. Some of these over here are made of velvet, some of lame, some of a, of a silk. Some of them are sitting on little stands and some are embellished with silk ribbon embroidery. Most of them actually have wonderful ribbons and other Victorian goodies on them. This one, one of them is actually sitting on a box. Now, if I come over to the two on this side, you can see that one of them has really nice silk ribbon embroidery on the front with little tassels. I just think that's so interesting, the little ribbons of different colors and the tassels. And then the black mannequin has two pieces of jewelry, one at the neckline and a necklace around the neck. These are so simple to make. You start with a dowel stand, and these can be purchased at the craft store, or if you're any good at all with woodworking, you can get a base and drill a hole in it and put a dowel stick in it. Then you make your pattern, make your little mannequin pattern, cut it out, sew it up. It just looks like a human body form there. Now I'm going to turn it right side out. I just sewed it up with straight stitches. I'm going to turn it right side out. And of course, I'll have to use a point turner and, and get it fixed just right, but you get the idea. Then I'm simply going to stuff this little mannequin with polyfill, and you're gonna need a lot of it because you want it to be really nice and tight. I'm gonna stuff this polyfill right up here and go all the way up, and then I will glue it on when I get it stuffed. I will simply slip it down here and glue it on. Now then, my silk ribbon embellishment was done, of course, before I did my final steps. Won't you come along with me to my attic? Today I have some beautiful ladies lingerie to share with you with beautiful lace shaping. As you can see, the top has lace insertion with silk ribbon run through it, and the bottom is absolutely beautiful. I want you to look at the lace shaping on this. It has uh, miters and they cross over each other almost like the Celtic lace shaping crosses over. And this is a butterfly. It is absolutely just appliqued on. It's a piece of lace and then the embroidery to make the middle look like a butterfly I think is just beautiful. And on the bottom there are three strips of edging stitched together to make a wider edging. That was done so much on these beautiful antique garments. I guess the ladies just wanted a wider piece of lace than they had access to. And actually that's a good idea for us today just to stitch three pieces together. You lay one over the other and just straight stitch them or tiny zigzag them. For our Sewing from the Heart segment today, I have a letter from Joyce Frank of Glendale, Arizona. Dear Martha, several years ago I decided to get rid of some of my fabric stash by sewing baby quilts. I began by cutting fabric in strips and sewing them together randomly. After I had used up most of my miscellaneous scraps, I bought children's prints when they were on sale at the local fabric shop. Eventually, I found I had made 50 quilts which I donated to my church, the Lutheran Church of the Master. They gave them to various charities, such as a center for abused mothers, to hospitals, and so forth and so on. Our local NBC TV station has a series at Christmas where homes are found for homeless families. I saw an abused mother with her baby wrapped in one of my quilts. What a wonderful feeling. The Lutheran World Missionary Service also supplies baby clothes and diapers to their missions. I have made more diapers than I can count from scraps of flannel left over from the nightwear I have made for my six grandchildren. I've also made kimonos and other baby items. Well, Joyce, that is absolutely a wonderful project. And you know, I know that you were excited when you looked on the television and you saw that this mother had her baby wrapped in one of your quilts. There are so many women who are using their time and their talents and their sewing machines sewing for those less fortunate. I'm so glad you joined me in my sewing room today 
and I'd like to invite you back next time.